A debris flow is a type of a landslide hazard. Those happen when you get water and debris quickly moving through a drainage, mostly in a steep area, down to an area where it's flatter and where the material drops out. Debris flows can happen after a fire. They can happen after a rainstorm. Here we have a post-fire debris flow, or what we call a secondary hazard. Because of all the erosion that happened upstream of here, the materials quickly eroded, went into the channel, and during a rainstorm event, all this material became entrenched with the water and quickly flowed down. Debris flows typically give very little warning. Many times people are killed at night while they're sleeping in their beds, not knowing that there is a hazard. Most people who've been killed by mudslides or debris flows have been killed sleeping in first story bedrooms facing upslope or up the drainage. If you're going to build on an alluvial fan or with debris flow risks, we recommend that you not place bedrooms in the first floor facing towards the drainage or up the slope. To the untrained eye, a flatter area here may be a good place to build, but there are hazards here. Any time that you're building at the base of a slope, a base of a drainage, or on a flatter alluvial fan, there's always a hazard. These are very unpredictable. You can see the material here has been deposited in a 100 foot wide, 10, 15 foot tall pile. Next year when this happens, it may occur in a different area in the fan. So the hazard is constantly changing. That's why we have this fan shape or alluvial fan because it's always moving, it's always changing. All you need is a rock in the drainage and the fan will move. So they're very unpredictable. A lot of times people think, oh good, the fire's out, the problems are done. But really the problems just begin when the fire's out. This area has flooded many times since the Heyman and Schoonover fires in 2002. In 2006, for example, flooding took out the highway along 67 between Woodland Park and Deckers and cost the state $7 million to repair. So the after fire flooding is really a big thing for people for decades after a fire like this. This area, if you look back here, you see this sediment fan, and this is out of what's called an ephemeral draw. That means that water doesn't run down here regularly, but only comes down in big rain events and snowmelt periods. You can see the hills up behind us. The soil came off of there in the first year or two after the fire when there was no grasses to protect those hill slopes. It deposited in that main channel. You look down here, the river's actually dropped down since the fire probably 10 feet. But the material that came off the hill slopes entered that drainage and then continues in every rain event to come down and build this type of large wall of material that then forces the river to keep cutting downward and downward more over time. This debris flow actually clogged the river, it blocked the river, and you can have flooding behind where the river is blocked. So not only did we have a fire and then we have a secondary hazard here of a debris flow, but it also causes another hazard of flooding. And as far as an emergency manager is concerned in looking at these issues, you want to make sure that you have plans. If the road is blocked, some secondary access, what will you do if the creek becomes blocked? Uh, those are the kinds of things that you think about. Sometimes people will try to put parking lots in these areas. Um, you want to make sure that you have a good evacuation plan if you're going to put a parking lot in a, a debris flow or a alluvial fan area. Um, sometimes people put campgrounds in areas. In California, we had uh, a, a case where people at night were killed sleeping in a campground and they didn't even really know that there was a danger because the storm cell was much farther up in the drainage and they didn't even know it was raining so debris flows can travel long distances very quickly and it can be very hard to prepare or to uh, avoid that hazard. One of the other things that can happen with alluvial fan and debris flow flooding is you'll see here where the larger materials have settled out but the, the smaller sediments 
can travel very far distances. And in fact, following the Buffalo Creek and the Hayman Fire, we've had thousands of tons of sediment find their way down to Strontia Springs Reservoir and fill that reservoir. And the Denver Water Board has spent about $27 million to date trying to dredge out that sediment from the reservoir. And there's still a lot of work to be done. After a fire or anything that removes the vegetation, you have increased erosion and increased sediment supply that can lead to debris flows. In this case, the fire has burned away the tree roots, which used to hold the soil in place. You'll see holes where the trees used to be holding the soil and the rocks in place. This will cause increased erosion, increased sediment supply that's available for debris flows. So after the fire, we would see these major flood events. And coming down this valley after one of these flood events, it looked like a wall of water and mud moving down the valley. So we went in with this partnership and have developed a plan to mitigate this to help protect the downstream residents and water supply. What we see here are sediment catchment basins. So these are designed in the fan. We're standing on an alluvial fan. And these are designed actually in the fan to help drop sediment out of these floodwaters when they happen. And we've done this up and down the stream system in here. What we do here is we create these new types of channels. And you can see up above the log structure, you see little cuts. So in the wider areas, it's dispersing the flow evenly over that area and then it drops off into a sediment catchment pond. It then enters a new stream channel when we have a flood flow, and you can see this new channel, and we'll take the new channel over and bring the water into the creek. Our plan is that by the time the water gets to the creek, with this design, we have a reduced quantity of water, and we have a reduced amount of sediment entering the creek. When you do have people working in these types of areas, one of the other aspects that you need to consider on your emergency planning is how do you get those people out in the case of an event? So we've gone through work areas and we look beforehand and have this mapped out where are good safe parking places. We also have then areas that we will shuttle people into in a vehicle so that we're bringing in one bus that we get everybody on and out rather than 50 vehicles. People want to come out, they want to help after an emergency. They really want to do that. But you want them to do that really safely. So the planning part before you bring volunteers out is critical. Debris flows may not be the most prevalent hazard in Colorado, both in terms of economic loss or in terms of occurrences, but they're not to be taken lightly. They are one of the most dangerous hazards we have. They can happen quickly, they can happen without warning, they can quickly overtake a home, a car, you can be buried and killed very quickly. You should take them into consideration when planning for future development, from looking at where to put utilities, where to put transportation routes, where you should put your major investments. You don't want to put critical facilities like schools or fire station in areas that may be subject to debris flows. If you're planning a special event, you want to make sure that you can get people quickly in and out of debris flow areas. Those are just some of the things that you should consider through the land use and through the emergency management planning process. Mother Nature should not be taken lightly.